Okay, so, we will start the hash function, we will talk about hashing. So, the problem comes for the what is called symbol table problem. So, what is the symbol table problem? Basically, we need to store. So, T is the table uh, which is holding uh, so symbol table T basically holding n records. So, we need to store the n records. So, what are the record basically? So, record is having few few fields and which is say x is the pointer pointing to this record and among this field there is one field which is referred as key of x which is basically unique and remaining are some other data field may be satellite data or something called. So, but one field is unique identification of this record. So, this is one record this is a record. Okay. So, may be this is a student record. So, student has roll number name uh, age CGPA, SGPA, address. So, these are all field, but we need to find out one field which will be used for unique identification of the student, maybe student roll number or student PAN card number. So, that is the key of x. Okay. So, the problem is to maintain n records. So, we need to store n records in a table. So, that is the problem. So, that is called symbol table problem. So, now, uh, so we need to have a data structure to store to maintain this record such that we should able to perform few operations. So, what are the operations on T? So, basically operations are basically three basic operations insertion. So, we should able to insert a record in, in the uh, table and we should able to delete a record from the table. Okay, so, these two is the dynamics, these two will make the record dynamic. So, basically we have dynamic set of records. Uh, so, we have already seen one dynamic set where in the priority queue that heap, when you talk about heap data structure to which is basically the implementation of the priority queue. So, there we are we are we are having a set S which is a dynamic set. So, any point any time any time anybody can join and any time anybody can leave. So, we should able to have that query maximum of that set uh, if it is max we take max if or minimum of that set or we should able to decrease something. So, this way. So, this is basically the uh, make this set dynamic. So, we have a record set of we need to maintain set of n records and this set is dynamic in a sense that any point of time anybody can join into that table or anybody can delete and we should able to search a record that is very important query. So, it is should able to search a record whose key value is k. So, given the key value k we should able to find whether that uh, record is there or not. So, given a student ID we should able to find out the student record is in our database or not. So, student record is there in our table or not. So, this is the problem. So, this is the problem called symbol table problem. So, we need to have a data structure for this. So, we need to store the n record in such a way that we should able to perform these operations. So, it should able to insert a new record we should able to delete a record that these two operation makes this set dynamic and we should able to search and this should be in a faster way. So, we need to have a data structure for this. So, let us just think about what is the uh, data structure we can use for this. So, let us start with the very simple data structure but very powerful array a simple array. So, this is called direct access table. Direct access table. Okay, so, here we are assuming the keys are coming from some set of values. So, we are assuming that 
uh, the keys are coming from this set 0 1 up to n minus 1. Okay. So, this is the uh, so, maximum value of the key is basically m minus 1. So, this assumption is required. So, then basically we set an array, it is a simple array, m dimensional array like this. So, we basically have an array. So, this is t 0 t m minus 1. Okay. And this is direct access means. So, now, uh, now this array. So, if a record is there in the table, then we put that value on otherwise off. So, uh, t of t of k is basically the record we got if x belongs to k and k of x is basically small k. Okay. So, and otherwise it is nil. So, basically or, or we can have a 0 1, 0 1 bit and but. So, we put this 1 if the corresponding say, say this is 5. If say suppose this is some at some time our t our record set is this say 5, 2, 3, 6, suppose this is our record set. So, 5 then 3 must be here. So, 3 these are 6. So, these are of 1, then set this is 2, 2, 2, 1, 0. So, these are of 1. So, this is just a bit vector 0, 1. So, if that particular record is there key value, then we put it 1, otherwise we put it 0. So, that is very simple data structure. This is called direct access table. So, 0 1 bit, we can just maintain this array by 0 1 bit, if the record is, but somehow we need to have some information about the record, where from we can get. So, we can store some pointer of that record. So, this will indicate the record is there or not. Okay, if the record is there, we can have some uh, pointer to access that record, but anyway those are implementation issue, but we are just concerned about the presence or absence of that record. So, if the key value, if the key value 5 is there. So, that means, we have a record presence whose key value is 5. So, that means, this, this is on and then we can maintain a field over here, which will give us the exact address or the pointer, where we will get the fetch the record, I mean the whole record, whole data. Okay. So, this is the idea, this is the idea of the direct access table. Now, uh, now if we use this simple data structure. Now, what is the time complexity for those operation? How to insert an element? Suppose you want to insert, insert say 10. We want to insert a record whose key value is 10. So, what we will do? We go to this 10 and we put it 1 and somehow if we are maintaining that, we will put a x over here. Okay. That will corresponding to this record. So, that is basically linear time operation, I mean not linear, constant time operation. We are going to that particular field and we are putting the switch on, that is it. And deletion is also similar way, if you want to delete say 5. So, what we are doing? We are going there, we are putting it 0, we are making this empty. So, deletion is also constant time. And searching, searching a record, suppose you want to search a record whose key value is say 3. So, what we do? We go to that position, go to that array position t of, so such k say t of k. Now, if t of k is 1, then we got the record and we somehow if we have the information about the record, physical record, we go to that position and we get the record. So, t of k depending on the value of t of k, if it is 0, then the record is not there. So, it simply say no, record is not there or if the t of k is 1, we got the record. So, this is the search. So, search will also take theta 1 time. Okay. So, this is the, this is, this is all our constant time operation. Uh, this operation can be done in constant time. So, this is very simple data structure, but very powerful. This is just a 0 1 bit, uh, bit vector. 
but this has a problem this data structure has a problem in the sense that the memory problem because suppose say we know there will be number of records will be less so maybe maximum we can have 6 7 records say or something more but the size of the record is more suppose we have at some point of time we have this size so 2 3 uh, 999 9, 9 and 4. So, this is the at some point of time this is the situation snapshot of the set dynamic set. Okay. Now, we are allowing the record size to be this. So, for that we need to maintain the array of this many long size although we have only so 999 9, 9, maybe longer than that, but we have only using few bits. So, that is the memory problem, memory problem because if the value is more, if the value of the record key, key value of the record is more although the number of records is less then it is the wastage of the memory. So, this is the major drawback of this simple array data structure although this is very powerful this is just a 0 and bit okay, switch on off simple very simple data structure, but this is a problem with the uh, value we are allowing for this key value. If the key value is we are allowing more, then we need to maintain a this is statically static uh, allocation this array. So, we need to have this data structure, do we need to have the array size up to this the maximum value we are allowing for this key value. So, this is the drawback. Although our number of record is less, so to avoid this drawback, what is the solution is to have a function which is called hash function which is called hash function. So, basically if hash function is a function from u to this set. So, suppose we have uh, so, uh, so the u is the set of, so this is the universe of the key, universe of key okay. and this is the slots, I mean this is the table size. So, we have uh, uh, we have say table of, so there are m slots. So, we have a table or this is a simple array and this is the universe of the key. So, set of all possible keys this is u. Okay. Now, hash function is a mapping from u to this set. So, if you take any key of from here and if we apply h of this k it will reach to us a slot over here say i i slot. So, this is basically h of k is i. So, any such function is called hash function. So, it is basically taking a key and it is uh, giving us a slot basically it is giving us a value from 0 to suppose we have given. So, this is we have given we have given the we are allowed to have uh, table size up to m. So, 0 to m minus 1. So, our hash function will be uh, we take a key from here and it will map to a it will map to a slot from 0 to m minus 1. So, any such function is called hash function. Okay. Now, suppose we have a hash function then how we can uh, maintain a record. So, so, let us draw this. Okay. So, this is a function from e to this set 0 to m minus 1 and this is the set of all possible keys and this is the set of keys of our interest. So, so this is the key set we have so far. So, here we have some k 1, k 2 some keys are there k 3, k 4 like this. So, now we have to maintain that stable. So, what we do we apply the hash function on k 1 suppose it is mapping here. So, h of k 1 is basically 1 say this is 1. Now, k 2 say h of k 2 is basically say 3 something like that. Okay. So, 
So, this way now h of k, k 3 is basically say some slot here i slot say i. So, this is basically h of k 3 is i. Now, suppose h of k 4 is basically say some slot here. So, h of k 4 is say m minus 1 something like that. Now, suppose we have a k 5 whose hash value is say this. So, suppose h of k 5 is also mapping to the same slot i. So, then we have a problem and this is what is called as collision. This, this situation is referred as collision. Collision means suppose we have a two key which are going to map into a single slot and that is quite possible because if the slot is if this set is small and if this set is bigger. So, if we have a function say h is a function if you have a function from a bigger set to smaller set. Uh, so, then there has to be a collision. Okay. So, collision is quite natural in the situation of the hash function because usually this set is smaller set. So, basically hash function is basically as a compression function. So, we have a big lane input. So, we convert into small lane output. So, that is the compression function. So, since this is a smaller size this codomain uh, this is the domain this is the codomain is smaller. So, there has to be collision. Okay. But now the question is how we can handle this collision. Okay, so, collision will be there. So, how to handle this collision because here h so h 3 so the k 1 is here k 2 is here k 4. So, uh, sorry k 2. So, k 3 and k 5 both is colliding to the ith slot, but they cannot sit in the single slot here. So, then what is the solution? So, we have to do some sort of chaining over here. So, because there are because this is a position for only one guy, this is a room for one one. So, we can have a something what is called uh, chaining or link list. So, k 3 then we can have k 5. So, this is called chaining method to handle the collision. Okay. So, this is basically link list if a slot is containing more number of keys then we will put that uh, outside the table we will put a chain link list this is basically link list. We will put a link list outside the table. So, this is the way we just uh, handle the collision. Okay. So, if there are another say k, k 7 is also if say k 7 is also colliding here if the k 7 then we have a k 7 over here like this. So, if a slot is containing more than two keys I mean uh, more than one keys then we have to use this chain we have to use the link list for this. So, this is the uh, uh, collision. So, say for example, so now this chaining is a method to handle the collision. Okay. So, now we want to analyze this chaining method how good this is. Okay, so, this is the analysis of chaining. So, chaining is the method to handle the collision. Okay. So, now suppose there are uh, m slot 0 to m minus 1 and suppose there are this is the case the suppose there are k keys n keys there are m slot m n keys. So, so, m is the number of slots and n is the number of keys. Okay. So, now so k 1 k 2 k n. So, now among this if there is a collision suppose this slot i th slot having collision say 52 say 55, 96 like this. So, all of this h of 52 is equal to i is equal to h of 55 these are the key value h of 96 all are mapping to same slot. Okay. So, this is basically uh, 
this is basically the uh, chain in, in that slot, if there are say three, three keys are colliding there. Okay, now, what is the worst case of this? Now, how to search a key? Suppose, we want to search a key. Suppose, we want to search say 96 is there or not. So, what we do? We apply the hash function on it. So, it will, it will first map to the ith slot. Then, we know there is a chain. So, we have to, uh, we have to read the chain basically. So, basically we are reading the, we are just scanning the chain. So, that is the way we search a key. Now, what is the worst case for this chaining? So, worst case is, now suppose all these elements are colliding in a single slot. So, there are n keys, all are colliding here. Then, this is the worst case. Then, the search time will be order of n, because if it is colliding into this slot, then we have to, uh, because all are colliding in the same slot. So, there is a chain of psi chain. Okay. So, that means, when you search, if it is, if that key is colliding here, we need to search this whole list and this list is not sorted. We are not going to sort this list, then it will take some more time to sort. So, it is just a unordered list, linked list. So, we need to search our key in this linked list. So, that will take linear time, that will take the time of the, uh, depending on the size of the list. If the size of the list is linear, the time complexity is linear. So, that is a bad hash function, bad hash function in the sense that everybody is colliding in the same slot. That, so, there are n keys, all are colliding in the same slot, that is a bad hash function. So, what is a good hash function? If we have uniform distribution of the uh, keys over the slots. So, there are n slots. So, if n slots is distributed over this, uh, if there are n keys, if n keys are distributed over the slot uniformly. So, then, uh, then, uh, then n by m is basically what? n by m is basically, so there are n keys, m slot. If there are 100 say keys, and if there are 10 slots, so n by n is 10 basically, then 10 is the number of keys per slot, expected number of keys, I mean or the, so this is basically the number of keys per slot. Okay. So, this will happen if our hash function is uh, such that it is distributing the key over the slot uniformly. It is not that all the keys are going to a single slot. It is just we have n keys and it is distributing the keys among the m slot uniformly. So, that means, each slot will get n by m keys. So, this is called load factor. This is referred as alpha. This is called load factor. Okay. So, this is a uh, this is a condition, this is a criteria of a good hash function. So, a good hash function should be such that it should distribute the key. So, it should, so it distributes the key. distribute the keys uniformly over the slot. So, there are n keys m slot. So, each slot so that means, each slot should get same number of keys. I mean the distribution is. So, so given a given a key it will be in one of this slot is probability is 1 by m, it is equally likely. So, then this alpha is the load factor n by m, alpha is the expected number of slot or expected number of keys per slot. Okay. So, in that case, if we have such a hash function, in that case search time will be how much? So, for search, so, 
So you want to search a key. So to search what we do? So this is a say key we are going to search. So we first apply the hash function on this. So this will map to some slot, ith slot. Okay. Now we know in the ith slot there is a uh, there is a link list or chaining and this size of this chain is alpha. So, we have to just scan this. So, what is the time complexity for this? So, time is basically uh, 1 plus alpha. Since 1 is the time to apply the hash function and then this alpha is the basically the load factor that means, the number of keys per slot. Now, if our hash function is a good hash function, then this is the scenario. And now, if alpha is order of 1, so that means, if, if the n is uh, n is order of m or m is order of n, then alpha is 1, then this will be constant time. Okay. So, if our hash function is a good hash function in the sense that it distributes the key uniformly over this uh, slot, then alpha will have a uh, alpha is the expected number of keys per slot, then this is the time for searching a key or insert a key, because we first apply the hash function this will take 1 and then plus alpha is the size of the list we have in the in that particular slot. So, uh, so, this is the idea of the hash function and this collision is there and collision can be handled by the chaining and next class we will talk about how to construct such hash function. So, that it will be distribute the key uniformly over the channel. So, while we construct the hash function this should we should keep this in our mind that the it should distribute the keys uniformly over the slots. Thank you.